used a Google Meet chat to simulate a microphone speaker queue like they do in the ITF. So I type plus Q and minus Q to get into the speaker queue. And you can use a headphone or a echo canceling speaker phone. So you won't have echo uh, and wait till we grant the microphone and state your name for the notes. Okay. Uh, I don't know that we'll use polls here, but we might. Just a reminder, just because a document is hosted in WC repo doesn't mean it implies adoption by the working group. That requires a call for adoption. And editor's drafts do not represent working group consensus, uh, but working group drafts do. OK, so here's the uh, issues for discussion today. Uh, Harold will present the state of the working group. And then we'll talk about media caps transform and hopefully leave 10 minutes for wrap up and next steps. So, uh, do we have Harold here? Ah, Harold, you have the floor. Uh, you're muted, though. Muted due to the size of the call, yeah. Uh, so I put up some slides, uh, not very informative, but uh, briefly talking about what the group is chartered to do, what we have been doing a bit without going into specific details. I think that's uh, the, the task for other special separate agenda items and uh, some of what we need to do in order to go forward. Next slide. So we did have a GE charter in October 2020, which actually focused more on being forward looking and uh, saying, okay, we're going to do new things. We're, we also have a bunch of documents that we need to get published and uh, maintained. 15 documents in the charter, that's a lot. And uh, we had a few words in the charter about what particular direction we thought we were going in, uh, which uh, pointed that we have to focus on use cases so that we actually know that we are creating solutions for something that people want to do. And we're, we, we wanted to focus on direct control, which is kind of inspired by ORTC. Uh, so, next slide. So, what we have done that is within the charter work is that, yes, we have gotten the WebRTC PC 1.0 to REC. So it's a milestone, it's a status. Unfortunately, we're still working on media capture main and uh, uh, we got 13 documents in the queue that are, oh, dormant is probably a nice way to put it. I have a particular hobby project that I'm pushing on when I find find time, uh, because I think that it should should get done. But uh, they seem to be sleeping, and in particular, the use cases document seems to be very sleeping. I mean, we have gotten. Very little new input on it, people's, people's use cases. And uh, we haven't gotten all that much clarity on the use cases that are in there. And in particular, we haven't uh, seen that this document is, uh, has been used when people come up with new things that they want to, want to do. Uh, but uh, the maintenance work on uh, WebRTC PC and other and other fronts is ongoing. I mean, when we get experience with these APIs, 
We also find bugs in the APIs, and bugs lead to going back to the spec and say, saying, oh, what does the spec say about this? Well, the spec doesn't say, or the spec says the wrong thing. So experience finds bugs. So there's been a lot of fixes. I like the kind of fixes that say that, well, we couldn't, uh, the, spec, the spec said something, all the browsers did it right, uh, and now we're fixing the spec to match the browsers. So that's the easy kind. Uh, so next slide. What we have done, which is not quite what the charter envisioned, is a lot of new extensions, in particular, tab capture manipulation, row frame access, and color frame access, new device picker model. These are large, relatively large items that unlock some use cases, but not necessarily the use cases uh, from the WebRTC and the document. And some of these have been highly controversial, some of these have been a little bit controversial, and some of these have just slid in. So I'm worried about the way the, you know, the group currently works on these things. Next slide. Because we've had several discussions across several uh, uh, GitHub issues, uh, several GitHub repos, in fact, and, and several, several interim meetings where 90% of the words either spoken or written in these bugs and issues and meetings have been by approximately three people. Represent all the representing browser vendors. And um, we're not using the mailing list much. It's basically been, become announcement only. Uh, so the real debate when it happens is on GitHub issues. And we've had managed to get some traction in pulling in feedback from other groups when that's needed, which is good. But so we have failed to put in that much, get that much input from our own people. And that's bad. It might be because it's hard to follow. It might be because uh, people are not interested, or it might be because they don't think that it's worth their while to, to comment. But it makes it hard to claim that we're finding consensus. And that worries me. Next slide. So the way that we set up the process, and uh, WebRTC and the charter and uh, W3C and so on, was that we would de detect a need for some function. We would distill that need into a scenario, describing here's what we want to do and uh, here's what we think we need to, need it to have in order to do it. And then we would propose some extension spec or additional spec or change the spec or whatever that made sense in the context of that scenario and we would get consensus on it seems easy right but next slide what seems to be ha happening is that when we get requests for attention for, for extensions the need for the functionality is detected in-house at some, usually at some vendor. And uh, we have de we develop a solution also in house and propose it to a working group. And it doesn't seem that we were, we're all that good at getting consensus starting from that, point, that, that viewpoint. And especially we're not getting consensus fast. I mean, my 11-month uh, journey on uh, on uh, 
breakout box was currently 11 months. It's, it's probably a good example of uh, how we don't want, to, want the process to go. So we do have a problem. Not sure how to address the problem though. And next slide. The other problem we have, of course, is editing resources. Remember those 15 documents? The goal of the W2C process, as stated, is that we have a, a, a recommendation, which means that we have a specification with consensus. We have a test suit that exercises the, the stuff that can be tested in the specification within reason, and there are implementations which preferably pass uh, the test suite. But we have a lot of documents that I would characterize as languishing. They specify interfaces that may be present in some browsers, maybe not. They are uh, needed as documentation for those interfaces. But uh, we're missing test suites, we're missing implementations, we're missing uh, people who adjust the bug fixes because we have bugs filed on a lot of this. And uh, that is worrisome. I mean, who needs those? And, and if people need those, can they actually be challenged to put in the time and energy needed to get those fixed, get those out? Or if nobody needs those, can we abandon them and strike them from the charter? I'm looking at uh, some of the some of the, the the docs that have just not been updated for a very long time, and of course there's a category of yes we need them for some purpose, but we don't have we are unable to find resources to edit them. So what do we actually do in that case? I think that was my last slide. Can you do the next slide and see that is discussion? Yeah, I did have a slide saying discussion. So, open floor. What do we do? Bernard, I think, are you running the queue or should I run the queue? Uh, I'm, I'll run the queue. Uh, yes. We have uh, Tim Panton. Yeah, hi. Um, so, uh, slide 16, your process for how things actually change. Um, strikes me that that only works if you are able to edit the source code of a major browser and get it um, deployed. Like the, that, that, that process is, is entirely locked to the three vendors, and therefore I think that's how you get into the situation you described. I mean, I think your analysis is correct, but it's sort of the situation, the current situation is self-reinforcing is the point I'm trying to make, I think. Um, you know, making change is actually very difficult and testing it is very difficult if you're not on the inside. Um, certainly that's my perspective from the outside. Yeah, my, my counter example, my own, the only counter examples I can think of is that are, uh, uh, people's ability to get read into Chrome and uh, uh, and the the guy oh, suddenly his name fell away uh, who got uh, SVC uh, Im implemented. Sergio, I guess. Sergio, yes. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, so, uh, so so it's possible to get things into Chrome at least without being a Googler. But uh, it's hard, it's very hard. 
So Kellen at least has had great success at uh, getting uh, in the early days with uh, getting change uh, changes to the spec that actually got implemented by yelling at us. So it's not impossible that way either. But uh, I think I think uh, I think it's very easy to slide into the territory you describe. Uh, you went. Yeah, um, so 13 documents is a lot, but uh, I'm sure like out of these 30 documents, uh, some have like uh, already implementations, uh, which thing of uh, media recorder or get display media, for instance. And as I see it, they mostly get updates when there's somebody that is implementing or fixing a bug in, in a browser, then updating the, the spec. So somehow there's success there. I mean, Media Recorder is shipped and is being used, and that's great. Get Display Media are the same. So WebRT Working Group did a, a lot of good stuff there. And it's just passing the line to go to REC. But the question is, what will our users gain for going to REC? And uh, I'm not exactly clear about the, what benefit we'll get there. So. But that might be one reason why we, are, we have difficulties going to wreck on some of these documents. Uh, we already have implementations there, uh, good enough interrupt, even not great. And yeah. So at, at least we should try to sort out these kind of documents from the documents that have not seen progress and not seen implementations as well, because these, these are really two different types of documents. Yes. I'm my canonical example for the last other type was media capture depth. Right. Yeah, I'd like to follow up on what you said. I think we've noticed, particularly in the ITF, we had to pare down the standards process. There were too many stages and people weren't getting to the ultimate stage because it was too much work and too little benefit. And I think the same thing may be happening in the W3C where um, the effort needed to get to, to rec may be just too much. That doesn't necessarily mean the document is dead or not useful, uh, but I think we, we there's probably an issue there where we need to distinguish those things which aren't getting implemented and really are dead from those things that are implemented in multiple browsers and alive to some extent um, and are being used. And, and maybe we should go through the 13 documents and figure out what categories they, they fill in. I, I don't think all of them are are really uh, not moving or not used. Hmm. I mean, uh, off, the top, off the top of my head, we have uh, stats and image capture and uh, output and recorder, which are all in active use. Right. And but in multiple uh, browsers, right? Multiple what? browsers. I think it's multiple browsers. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't checked, but. But uh, the presence of uh, years old bugs filed against these specs make, makes me nervous. Uh, Colin? So uh, I, I want to talk about just sort of two different things to so sort of the, the general problem you hit and then specifically about what areas we might want to lo look at. I mean, in, in the very general sense, and I this this isn't something that I think this working group can necessarily fix or anything, but I think that when many of the people started WebRTC, they saw this standard of an API as a, as a negotiation between what the people providing the API and what the people using the API needed. And if we could come to agreement on that in the form of a spec, then um, people would implement it if they wanted to say that they were compatible with that. And that turned out not to be true. It turned out to be that the and it was wasn't you know was known ahead of time. It wasn't like this big surprise or something. But the W three C process gave the people implementing the spec of which there's really only you know maybe there's two implementations, but in many ways there's one implementation. It's not a lot of implementations anyway. Okay, so there's not a lot there. Um, it gave those people just a, a veto on everything, and that really. Uh, change the tone, tone of the conversation because one anytime you have a negotiation where one power, per, one group has ultimate veto of everything, 
it's not a lot of incentive for the other group to do too much. I mean, they'll, they'll do something. I mean, I, I, you know, and and to Carol's points earlier, like lots of things got in that weren't exactly what maybe one of the major uh, browser vendors imagined to start with. So I'm not saying it doesn't didn't work. Like we're on a WebRTC call right now. It worked at some level, um, but when we when we start getting to you know i mean i i think when you ask like why is this a one-sided conversation it's because well it's a one-sided process and, and unless the browsers are are willing to commit some resources at some level to try and build things that you know argue hard for what they think is right but then build what we agreed to versus what they thought was right um you know it's it's going to say a one-sided conversation and uh, and again the w3 process forces it to be a one-sided conversation so we have to agree to be move off that a little bit so the other thing that I want to hit is just a little bit about what are the use cases we need. And Harold said, like, you know, we're, we're doing this for developers, and it's true at some level, but we're also doing it for internet users. So let's say we look at what are the major things that, you know, over 100 million people use on a daily basis that use WebRTC or could use WebRTC on the internet or, or any, like, look at it that sort of way. Like, what is the user base on the the internet and why are those apps not doing it and right now if you look at every major web conferencing app they do everything they can to convince users not to use the webrtc version of their app and the reason why is the user experience in the webrtc version is much worse than what they can deliver with the non uh with the non-browser versions probably camera and microphone selection and knowing whether that worked or not is probably the biggest the biggest single reason why all of them push people off of that is because when it doesn't work, it's very hard to explain to users what to do to fix it. Um, so I think we should look at some of the reasons of like, why are people not using this? Um, what are the things that are really looking at? And and not look at it from like, I, I, and, and look at it like holistically from some of the, the major apps which we would want to use it that would impact, you know, millions of people and we could have better privacy. Like there's so many things we could have better for them if we could, if they were using the web apps versus the the you know thick versions or mobile versions um i just think though that we should we should look at you know we're, we just finished up 1.0 awesome uh, you know but let's let's go back and look at hey what are some of the things we got wrong what are what are some things that are the real pain points in using this spec and can we fix any of them and you know as much as we all hate sdp i mean i'm not sure sdp turned out to be the biggest pain point in the long run uh, it's it's other things that are causing it not to be used. So thanks, uh, Dom. Uh, yeah, I think I've lost a bit the plot of what I wanted to say. I mean, in terms of reaching um, recommendations, the cost of doing it versus the benefits. Uh, ultimately, I think it's a matter of the group to assess where the cost-benefit ratio is. Uh, years old issues that are not getting traction, well, maybe they can be said as you know, there uh, is no good solution at the moment, or there is not such a strong need even looking at it again or something else. Um, but of course, that needs someone to actually do the work of looking at them and evaluating whether they are still relevant or not. So the, uh, I think the lack of uh, resources uh, is definitely of editing resources in particular is definitely part of the picture. Uh, and that may speak to Cullen's point that uh, if uh, people feel disenfranchised uh, in their ability to influence the works, and of course they won't participate. Uh, uh, I don't agree <laughs> with the way Cullen uh, represented the process as being one-sided, in fact, uh, there are quite a few mechanisms for uh, balancing the conversation, but uh, obviously uh, this hasn't worked out at least for one critical player. So I would say no matter what the process allows, uh, the operation of the process obviously hasn't been. Hey, Kim. Satisfactory is that. Yeah, so, um... I kind of wanted to just shade what Cullen said. I think I, I kind of largely agree with him, but I, I, I think that the it's kind of pointless looking backwards. Um, like the, the you know the the people we're talking about who've got a, a push through towards the mobile or the installed app version of 
your the average web conference platform aren't going to change that. There's just too many benefits from them in terms of being able to extract your user data and, and all of the rest of it that they're not going to go back. That that's not a not that position isn't going to unwind, and we'd be wasting time trying to fix it, encourage them to do that. Now, I mean, Cullen's in a position maybe to comment on or not comment on whether that's true for some other big companies, but I, my perception from the outside is that that ain't going to happen for at least some of the market players. And, and so what we should maybe be looking at is where WebRTC isn't being used, um, but it could be. And, and from my perspective, and I'm totally biased on this and I accept that, is there's an absolutely vast market in, I, in IoT that we should be we should be all over. It's the place where, like, which needs the security, it needs the ease of use that WebRTC can bring, and and the zero install and all of that stuff. And and I, there's just a few things that need changing that would make it so much easier. And I, I you know, I would love us to spend some time in that space and, and put some effort into solving those few remaining problems there, mostly around ice, in my view. Hmm. Got me, Bar? Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, <clears throat> I wanted to make two points. One is that I think uh, companies have been redirecting from web to apps outside of WebRTC as well, especially on mobile. So sites clearly have other incentives there as well. <clears throat> and I would say in WebRTC, having a web client is actually a strength because you get a broader reach of audience. And an audience typically doesn't want to install the software of the host. Um, so there's that. Um, as far as participation, I agree with everything that's been said. I also want to notice uh, that it seems to me that the people speaking a lot have experience talking in public. So I wonder is the fact that we're recording meetings and publishing them on YouTube discouraging participation in some way. Those are my comments. Colin? I dropped myself off the queue, it's fine. I'll pass on to someone else. Okay, yeah, Harold pointed out uh, we're at time for this segment, so we'll probably uh, move on to the next uh, part of the agenda. Uh, but thank you, everyone, for coming. I think this is probably a subject which deserves a little bit more uh, discussion as to maybe how we, how we change things or where we go uh, from here. Okay, so uh, next segment of uh, this session is on Media Capture Transform. Um, just like to recap some of the activity in September and October, uh, we had a call for consensus for transferable media stream tracks, which was successful. Um, and then at the October 14th virtual interim, we had uh, a discussion of presented by UN of the state of what WG streams, because there has been uh, some issues that have impacted media pipelines. Um, the GitHub discussions on that were showing some progress, but there's no running code. And so there was an overall question about how we even coordinate between the W3C and the WhatWG. Uh, and I think the outcome of that, and Dom can speak, is that we will have a potential future meeting with the WhatWG streams editors to kind of get a sense of, of where we are on the usability of WhatWG streams. So that's a positive. Um, we also talked about about the comparison between transferable media stream tracks and transferable WebWG streams. Um, and basically with transferable media stream tracks, the, the streams can be created entirely in a worker thread rather than uh, just on the main thread and then transferred to a worker. Um, and UN made the point that this might yield more predictable performance. Um, also, there are some advantages of track.clone uh, versus stream.t. Um, and so I think overall it was a, a, a proposal at least that the transferable media stream tracks model is better than, than transferable streams, although that's, I think there's still some debate on that. Um, the other thing that happened at the October 14th interim is we had a presentation from Yanni Var and Harold on proposals for media capture transform. So this was a slide from Harold's deck kind of comparing the two proposals. They're both based on streams. Um, and uh, but they they do differ in the support for media types, um, as well as uh, support support for worker threads and main threads are just worker only. 
So those are some of the dimensions um, of difference. And so we had a sense of the working group poll on three questions. Should uh, the API be based on streams? Should it support audio? And should it be exposed on the main thread? And those kind of encapsulated the major uh, issues in, in the proposals. So here were the results. We didn't get a large number of responses. We got eight responses. Um, on question one, should it be based on streams? Six yes, two no. Um, and then on questions two and three, somewhat mixed responses. Uh, on the issue of supporting audio, it was four yes, three no, one undecided. Uh, and one of the yes responses was more like, uh, I have no objections to it. Not sure it's, it's a great idea, but um, I'm not going to object. And then on question three, should media capture transform be exposed on main thread? Uh, answer was three yes and five no. And I think the concerns of the no's were mostly on the kinds of things that could be done on the main thread that might be severely disruptive. Um, and those are some of like the machine learning or uh, effects processing that would be very computationally intensive uh, and could really disrupt disrupt the main thread. So now I'd like to open it up uh, for discussion. People have any any comments on where to go from here? Yes, Yanibar. Sorry, it was uh, UN in the queue? Or is that from uh, before? UN is not in the queue at the moment. Uh, or or, okay. or were, UN, were you in the queue for this discussion? OK, you, uh, UN, you want to speak? Uh, it dropped off and re he tried. Ah, OK. So yeah, UN, are you there? OK. Uh, I can go first. Um, I just want to clarify a couple of things. Um, on on streams, um, uh, I think some of the issue there has been people who don't want streams say that streams can be polyfilled. And that's true, but that the same could be said for promises, which could have been filled polyfilled on top of all callback-based APIs. And there wouldn't have been a need to switch the platform. But that's not what happened. Uh, we want we went with promises because that's the new higher level paradigm and because the rever the reverse works as well meaning callbacks can be polyfilled on top of modern promise apis for instance you just say promise dot then success callback failure callback where's your callback similarly if you want to use promise return callbacks you can use for await on a readable <coughs> so that's my comment on the streams uh, on the audio question <coughs> um Framing questions are hard, but uh, and one question we did not ask, uh, because it's obvious, is does Media Capture Transform need to support audio? And the answer there is no. So one way uh, moving ahead, uh, since I was the undecided vote, might be to try to polyfill it with audio workload for now and observe and learn from. Um, and if, if that works well, maybe we should standardize it. And to clarify on exposure on main thread, uh, Neither proposal, uh, even with the proposal that is worker, I the proposal I presented, I would present as worker first, which means that you need a worker to access uh, bits from the PDCM track. But once you have your readable, writable objects, nothing prevents you from transferring them to the main thread if you really need them there for now. Those are my comments. OK, uh, UN, are you? Yeah, sorry, I there? was interrupting. Yeah. I had to return. Um, so uh, on this topic, first, I, I would say that there are three proposals. And if you look at all of them, you will see that Yonivar's proposal is in the middle somehow. It's taking like uh, some bits from the left and some bits from the right, um, <clears throat> which is fine. I mean, that's OK. Um, now, uh, I would say that uh, it, it's difficult to try to to solve like everything and we've seen that uh, and so what i know is that we really need to have like uh video capture uh being like video transform being done in a better way 
um, this is used and we, we need to solve that. And uh, that, that should be like the P1. And if we look at that and just try to do that, then we, we, can, we can be faster. Now, if we're trying to uh, address the problem of audio or the problem of main thread, my thinking is that uh, it will only delay uh, getting to a good solution that, that we have consensus for uh, the most, uh, the biggest issue, which is uh, video processing. So I would try to concentrate on that and put the rest uh, on the side for now and dig on these issues. And to get video processing, uh, we, we need to decide streams or not. And uh, so there, there are some good progress being made uh, we will discuss with the streams uh, working group editors, and I'm hoping that that will go, give us a very good picture of uh, what is solvable, what is not solvable, and uh, then we will have a, a very precise list of pros and cons of using uh, streams. And uh, based on that, I think we should be able to make a decision. Um, doing a decision before the meeting does not make sense to me. Yeah, um, I just have a comment, which is uh, an observation on some of the things Harold was saying earlier in the previous presentation, which is that one of the interesting things about the new work we're doing is it involves really the, the new, what I would call, what people think of as WebRTC and D is in fact the work of multiple W3C working groups. You know, there's Web Codex and the Media Working Group. There's a bunch of new machine learning groups that have started up. Um, there's us in WebRTC, and there's the audio working group. And, and one of the problems we have is we don't necessarily understand all the interfaces between these APIs or how they work together. Uh, as an example, I get updates on the status of various machine learning APIs, and I don't know that they're uh, thinking much about Media Capture Transform or exactly how, it would, how well it would work uh, with, with Media Capture Transform. Um, so I think there's there's a there's a, there is a, a problem here about overview, and I'm not sure that any individual uh, is in these five or six different groups, um, so understands all the interactions and whether these APIs really are are coherent, um, and that's that makes it very difficult to to answer some of these questions. And the answers may be different between the groups. You know, uh, the decisions made in media working group and this working group, but the APIs have to hang together, uh, and I think that's a pretty big challenge. Harold. Yeah, I, I was thinking of uh, an example of the of the way we stumble with the APIs is that we managed to to do a streams based API for insert encoded insertable streams that use that uh, didn't quite that was written at the same time as the as the web codex spec and it used a different frame, frame format and it turns out that some of these uh, differences are actually critical for making things work the way insertable streams work now so we can't just say oh switch formats i think you and has an an open pr on that that uh, might might improve things but uh, yeah, getting in, the interfaces interfaces to hang together when they are developed in different groups is a problem. Cross participation is probably necessary, but finding any any single person finding the time to jump into all these different contexts is hard. I'm not showing anyone currently in the queue. Is there someone I missed? So what are the next steps here? Uh, what, what, how do we uh, try to bring this discussion to closure? We have uh, discussed having a joint meeting with the What WD Streams to, to talk about those issues. So that's one way forward on that particular point. Um, what are the next steps on the on the other aspects? Uh, Danny Bar? 
you're muted. Sorry, thank you. Uh, well, I hate to suggest it, but um, the questionnaire or the, the state of the room kind of indicated, uh, it only really indicated uh, major support for streams. Mm -hmm. Right, it was pretty lacking in support for audio and pretty lacking in support for exposure on main thread. So, um, and I know you wanted to wait on the streams discussion, but uh, as far as deciding between these two proposals that are they're both stream based uh, from Miles, uh, so could we pare down the choices at least based on the decisions uh, on the uh, sense of the room that we have already, or is it premature? I think it's premature. I don't think that uh, um, people that answered uh, the um, the, pro, um, the poll actually had all information to understand uh, all all the impact of streams. Like the, Dom, for instance, said, "Hey, we should use streams uh, unless we find that it's causing more problems than it's uh, solving." For instance, and the answer to that. Uh, is totally unclear to me right now. And uh, if we take streams right now, I would say that it's causing more problem than if we uh, find, uh, if we design, if, if if we, for instance, take the API that I presented, the proposal that I presented that does not have all these issues. Now, a future version of streams might have some of these issues uh, being solved, and then the assessment will be different. So, but that's why I think that uh, we should wait. Hopefully, it should be just a couple of weeks or maybe days uh, to actually have the meeting and have a, a, a good feeling about where we will be going. And uh, that, that seems good to to do that in that order. Uh, Harold, having wasted uh, eight months, I'm not averse to wasting a, a few more weeks. But I do think that uh, it's possible to say that. It's possible to decide, for the work group to decide, that uh, we are going forward with uh, working on adopting a streams-based proposal, knowing full well that uh, it's possible to abandon this approach if it turns out to be infeasible. Meaning, I mean, uh, working on, pro on uh, proposals that eventually fail is just a fact of life. And so if we, if we wait until we know that we, we're going to be successful, we're going to wait so long that we're no longer successful. I, I think that in parallel to that, there are some issues that have been identified between uh, Yoniverse and our proposal. And there's uh, certainly room for a GitHub discussions on uh, to drill uh, on those specific issues on GitHub, for instance, uh, before the meeting. And that will make uh, progress in parallel uh, feasible. Yes. Um, I, I have a comment on streams, which is that the biggest issue I'm concerned about is actually none of the issues that were raised uh, in UN's discussion, but the issue of actually feedback between the stages. That is, uh, I'm, you know, for something like encoder rate control, back pressure as concept conceptualized in streams just isn't useful. Um, and that's the thing, you know, that's the thing that most concerns me is can we get good encoder rate control um and i don't think that's a streams issue per se it really is uh, as harold has said you know you need a stream kind of going back the other way with the feedback um and i don't know that streams really prohibits you doing that it's just we haven't really thought it through um so that would be a that's the biggest uh, issue in my, in my mind not any of the littler things that have been on github so that, that might be worth uh, filing a, an issue there, because uh, my understanding yep. would be that maybe it would not be stream-based, but maybe it should be. Uh, that's something we, we should track. Is it as, I mean, I'm happy to file it, but I don't think it's a streams issue per se, right? It's a, it's just, a, it's more of a feedback thing. It's almost like I'd almost want to challenge people with the code we have, you know, can you actually demonstrate a viable encoder rate control? Um, I actually think there there may also be problems in web codecs, which may be more of an issue than than any uh, streams issue or even any feedback issue. Um, I'm just not convinced that it can really work. Uh, but anyway, uh, 
Anyone else in, in the queue? Yanivar uh, and me. Okay, Yanivar. Oh, uh, yeah. So I should say um, we did have a conversation um, uh, with one of the editors at, uh, at the Stream Spec that Bernard alluded to, uh, which makes me quite confident about the upcoming meeting about streams uh, because it was highlighted that uh, at least three of the issues that I'm concerned the most about have solutions already posted on GitHub. Uh, that was indicated that it might be more of a question of uh, making sure that those will have implementations. So um, with that, I don't know if I would force the discussion or if that makes me happy to wait, uh, but I'm, I'm, you know, that gives me confidence that uh, we can get over that hump one way or the other. Um, on the question of rate control, uh, yes, we should definitely open an issue. Can we get good rate control? But it's the it's the concern that streams is getting in the way of good rate control because I don't believe that's the case. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's getting in the way. I just don't think it's helping. Right. But also, so, so we're going to have this meeting, and assuming that goes well, um, we'll have resolved the stream issue. But we're we still have leaves us with the two other issues, which I don't haven't heard uh, the, how we're going to resolve. And because there are no upcoming meetings to help us there. Yeah, we can we can create pl plenty of meetings. That's not a problem. <laughs> right. Uh, but, uh, uh, where was I? But, I thought I thought I had filed an issue on on rate control already. You, you will remember that the original proposal I had uh, had the stream going the other way right. with uh, rate control for as one of its usages. I abandoned abandon that of, uh, on advice of Guido saying because uh, it was uh, in that shape, it was basically useless if not fully specified. So uh, I thought uh, then it uh, because it, it would have uh, stream elements that were that were uh, were that that either had to be understood or had to be passed on and you wouldn't know that unless you would know which one to do and unless they're all fully specified so we we ripped that out because we couldn't get get uh, a clear, clear consensus on how it what it should look so it's uh, i thought we had an open bag on it but uh, I, can't, I can't find it at the moment and so to, to clarify yeah, to, to clarify, though, what you mentioned there was uh, about creating a back channel that would also be stream spaced, which I guess is a separate issue from mm -hmm. whether the main yes. data pipe should be stream spaced. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, uh, I, 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 I said there has to be a back channel, and uh, or backwards uh, feeding channel, and uh, then I thought, hey, we're using streams all over the place, so it has to be stream spaced. And um, and now I'm thinking that, well, oh, probably not. Okay. But there has to be an API. Uh, Tim Panton. Yeah, just just on that one. If you look at um, things like GStreamer, the back channel of which there is one isn't done as uh, in the same way as the forward channel. It, it's done as a um, kind of a like a, a bus um, a pub sub type uh, environment. And so you can kind of any anybody along the chain can pick out, hey, hey, this device is at this bit rate or whatever. So I think I think you need more flexibility for the back channel than a pure like stacked streams approach would, would give you. Um, that's my perception anyway, based on what, what they seem to have done. Any back? So one way I, I would frame uh, the, the current stat, state we're in is that I would say that we have consensus about exposure in workers. We don't have consensus about exposure on main thread. Does that mean that we can proceed since web IDL lets us say exposure equals and then arbitrarily pick window and dedicated worker? Is that a way forward?
not completely clear to me what the what 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 you are saying, but it, it sound, sounds like we at least can make a can get a proposal that is easy to change once uh, once consensus on this this question emerge emerges. Well, I, I guess I'm asking since both proposal now correct me if I'm wrong can be instantiated in the worker. Uh, could we agree that? Uh, we have consensus about that exposure in workers and and try to specify something there first uh, and come back to main thread exposure just to try to isolate the conversations. I think that's uh, possible. Of course, we're speaking with my Chrome hat on. We have an, uh, we have an API that is currently exposed on main which we're not going to withdraw anytime soon. So well, we'll, we'll deal with that when it, uh, as we go along. That's our problem, not your problem, not, not the working group's problem. Can, can we ask the same question for uh, focusing on video first then? I think we can, right? Hey, I think um, we're out of time for this segment, but uh, and now into the uh, wrap up kind of next next steps uh, portion of the of the agenda. Um, do we have a list of next steps that we need to take? Uh, I guess there's a scheduling of a meeting with the What WG Streams folks. Um, do we have a list of, of action items going forward? Do we want to schedule, for example, I know Harold had questions about uh, the use cases. Do we want to schedule a session at one of the interims uh, to discuss that and what to do about the use cases? And uh, we'll and and we might uh, want to schedule a session at an interim for uh, for doing a triage on uh, our document lists. Right. So I think that would require a little preparation, but that seems like a good idea. Yeah. So, so in terms of media capture transform, I had a proposal to start with a worker, knowing that you can always decide the extension to main thread later. But I'm not sure how we start such a proposal if we don't have uh, agreement on the other side of the shape. Uh, am I how, how are we going to converge on, on that aspect? Because I think that's probably the key thing before we can start anchoring this all into an actual draft specification. Well, are, are the other differences, aside from the three questions that we had, are the other differences that uh, unbridgeable? I know Jan Ivar and Harold were talking about adopting some aspects, uh, convergence on some aspects. Yeah, uh, so we, I think we'll have to take that that to GitHub. There was uh, one part, one particular uh, case where I, where I, I've come around to saying that I like Jan Evers' proposal better than better than my own. But uh, you know, it's not uh, not just my spec. We are, right. Um, so so I so I'll have to make sure that we ha we have an issue raised on it that we already have, and. Uh, and that we have uh, that that we have sign off from more people than me. Let me see. I'm going to create a. Li I've created a label in the WebRTS extensions repo for for media capture transform. I'm uh, going to lab label this uh, the the relevant bugs with that one. Mm -hmm. So 
So okay. it, it should be easy if, uh, by looking at the bug list and media capture transform to see what we are discussing that's relevant relevant in media capture extensions to see where the discussions are. Are there any other uh, action items or things we need to do going forward? Uh, well, uh, there was there was the question you had mentioned whether we should ask the same question about video and audio. I guess. Right. Okay. I, I do have one question about how to make more progress on the feedback channel, Harold. Do you have any suggestions for that? Let's file an issue. Okay. I have I have uh, thoughts, but uh, not not where I not where I want to want to say that this is what we'll have to do. Okay. All right. Um, our time is up. Uh, thank you for attending the WebRTC working group meeting at TPAC. Uh, and we hope to see you on the mailing list and at future meetings. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.